Basi Legani from Tubishvat, Tavshin Lamed Ches. We're in the middle of chapter three in our booklets. We're on page Samach Aleph, so the second paragraph of chapter three in this Basi Legani. What we've said is that um, Yisroi, Moshe Rabbeinu's father-in-law, Jethro, coming to the Jewish people in the desert to meet up with them and acknowledge the greatness of God, saying that God is... Now I know that God is greater than all other gods. So that was like a necessary uh, preparation for Mount Sinai. In fact, we quoted from the Zoyar. The Zoyar says that Yisrei comes and it says, Ata yedaiti, God, Hashem, God is greater than all other gods. And then through that, God is glorified. Uh, and then afterwards, God gives the Torah. So this idea that Yisrei comes and is sort of a preparation... Not really a, it's not really a preparation, but sort of an introduction. It had to precede Matan Torah, explains how it is that through um, Matan Torah we were able to then be able to serve God on our own. We explained that the whole, the, the, there's a, a certain advantage to serving God as a zone without service. And Matan Torah, God giving us the Torah, was something that, was, um, that came just from above, just on God's initiative. How would we then in turn be able to, to serve Him through our own efforts? So saying that that's those effort the the ability to serve god on our own our own efforts to come closer to god that comes from this introduction before mountain tire of yisrael coming and acknowledging god what that means we have to explain so we started in chapter three explaining this concept of yisrael coming uh, before mountain tire <clears throat> based on the verse in kehelas that shleim amelech the wisest of all men, King Solomon says, that I, I have seen, I, Shleima, the wisest of all men, have seen that there's an advantage to wisdom over foolishness, like the advantage of light over darkness. So we ask, what is that? It seems to be a self-evident uh, idea that, that wisdom is greater than foolishness seems to be obvious. What is this great, what, what is the verse telling us? What is this great wisdom and this great insight from Shlema t- telling us that, uh, that wisdom is greater than foolishness? So we explain that wisdom refers to Chachma of Taira, Taira wisdom, godly wisdom. And Sichlos, foolishness is, <clears throat> foolishness is uh, secular wisdom. So we're calling the secular wisdom foolishness. We're not saying that, that in a sense, the, the verse is telling us that it's not just that godly wisdom is greater than secular wisdom, but that rather that, that, godly, that compared to godly wisdom, secular wisdom is foolish. It's foolishness. <clears throat> but even so, what does it mean? What, what is it, you know, that, that itself, if you think about it, if godly wisdom is infinite, it's from God, then of course, even secular wisdom, as great as it might be, should, would obviously be considered foolishness in comparison. So this explains that what is, what is the verse telling us, <clears throat> not, the, dif- not the, 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 the distance between wisdom, secular wisdom versus godly wisdom, but telling us that there's an advantage to godly wisdom that comes from the secular wisdom. Just like we explained the second half of the verse, like the, great, the, the, the light that comes from darkness, what does it mean? Not that light is better than darkness, but that light, there's an enhanced light that comes from the darkness. When the light comes from the darkness, it's a much deeper, much more intense light. It's a different light. So the same is true that through the, the transformation of secular wisdom, by, by bringing it into the wisdom of Torah, that enhances even the wisdom of Torah, so to speak. That's what we said. We still need to explain what this means. <clears throat> so now, in the second part of uh, chapter 3, we have a question. Now that we've explained that, that um, there's an advantage to godly wisdom that comes from secular wisdom. So what do we, what, well, how does the verse tell it to us? It tells it to us that just as there's a, the, the, you know, it's giving proof, just as we have um, the, the idea that there's, there's an advantage to light that comes from darkness, the same is true with regard to, sec, the, to godly wisdom that comes from secular wisdom. Right? That just like Yisra and Ki Yisra and Abba just like there's a, an advantage of light that comes from darkness, there's an advantage to Chachma Mina Sichlos, the divine wisdom that comes from through the secular wisdom. But why would there... It's, aren't they the same thing? In other words, w- when we talk about light and darkness, and in the verse talking about light and darkness, and as we talk in general about light and darkness, when we say light, we mean godliness. When we say darkness, we mean the opposite of godliness. And we know that, that there's an advantage. That's what we talked about. We mentioned 
and the Basilagani is this whole idea of, is, is of transformation of unholiness, the transformation of foolishness into godliness is a much greater, uh, access is much greater godliness than when it's just straight godliness that you're drawing. But when you transform the unholy, that, that, that's, that's, uh, that, 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 that causes a much deeper revelation of godliness. So light is godliness, darkness is ungodliness, unholiness. <clears throat> so shouldn't that apply as well to wisdom? Godly wisdom would be light, and secular wisdom or a non-godly wisdom would be darkness. So what is it, what, what's the comparison here? Or in other words, isn't it, isn't it one and the same? So if it's one and the same, so then that brings our question back. What is Shalim HaMelech telling us? That just as there's an advantage to light from darkness, the so, same is true with Chachma from foolishness. It would be the one and the same. So that's the question that comes from <clears throat> foolishness. Like the advantage of light that comes from darkness. The fact that there's, in other words, the established fact that the verse is stating, there's a premise in this verse that there, we know yeah, that the fact that there's that through transforming light into darkness that enhances the light, that's a known fact. And what is this verse telling us? That the the same is true with regard to wisdom and foolishness. If we break down the verse, that there's an advantage to wisdom over the premise of this verse is based on the fact that we know that there's an advantage to light that comes from darkness. And based on that idea, we're telling you that also wisdom, same is true with regard to wisdom, the transformation of secular wisdom to godly wisdom is, is, enhances the godly wisdom. So if it's not a beer, we need to explain the Lukhaira seemingly once we already know the fact that through transforming and and, and <coughs> sensitizing causes an enhancement in holiness in light, right? Because we're saying that darkness and unholiness are synonymous, and holiness and light are synonymous. So it's one and the same. So Mao Achidish, if so, once we've already established that fact, once we know that, so Mao Achidish Bizashi Yeshis and Lachachma and Sikhlus. What are you tell what's the novelty in this idea that there's an advantage to wisdom over foolishness? And to the extent that the verse is saying it's not the verse is not only is the verse teaching us something, so obviously there's a novelty, there's something we wouldn't have known beforehand, but it's sort of dramatized in the verse. Where the verse starts with Vira Isi Ani, I Who's I, Shlema Hamelech, Achachamikol Adam, Shlema Hamelech, King Solomon, the wisest of all men, that he prefaces it by building this up, saying, I, the wisest of all men, have realized this idea that there's, with, there's an adva- enhancement to wisdom that comes from foolishness. So shouldn't that be self evident? Once we know that there's a Yisra in Ormina Chayshach, so isn't that the same idea? Chachman Sichlis, it should be the same thing. Divine wisdom is light, and secular wisdom is darkness. So the Rebbe is going to explain like this. <clears throat> that when we talk about um, light and darkness, we talk about transforming unholiness, what are we talking about? We're talking about Aveda. We're talking about divine service. A person has to deal with the unholiness of this world. We have to take either physical, you know, material matter, and you need to transform it into a mitzvah, or you have to grapple with your own evil inclination, with your own darkness within. And through that, we refine it by working with it and overcoming it and overpowering it. We, we light to the material world. And when you're learning Torah, it's not dealing with your own self. It is accessing, it's channeling something that's otherworldly, something that's from beyond. So when we're talking about working, dealing with our own internal struggles, our own self, so then you can deal with the, with the darkness, you can transform it to light. We're talking about Avaida, that there's a certain enhancement that can happen, or there's a certain impact that our service into our into ourselves and into the world because we're drawing it through. But when we're talking about learning Torah, how is it possible to say that through study of Torah you are enhancing the Chachma of Torah? That the Chachma of Torah, the wisdom, the divine wisdom itself is enhanced. The divine wisdom is, 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 is nothing to do with you and your service. You're merely understanding it. You're merely reading it and learning it and trying to understand it and have it resonate within you. But it's not... It, it's, not, it's not a form of Aveda, it's not a form of service. So if it's not a form of service, how is that, how is that possible? And that's the Chiddush here. So let's, let's see what he says inside. Based on what we said, which is that we had said earlier, that it was through Yisrael coming, through that, that enhanced Matan Torah, right? Was, we didn't really explain it yet, but based on that fact that we're saying that, it's th- that this sort of impacted 
um, um, the giving of the Torah Mount Sinai. So the the So the fact that we're saying that through dark that that, that through um, transforming the darkness you enhance the, the light that comes as a result. That's true with regard to light that comes through service. When we're talking about an enhancement of light, what kind of light are we talking about? A light that comes as a result of our service. So therefore, there would be appropriate to say that through our service of transformation of darkness into light. So through that, we, we're, we're, we're dealing with darkness to bring about light. So our efforts bring about a greater light. Right? Because it's all about our bringing that light, drawing that light down through our own efforts. So through your effort, depending on what type of effort you have, you bring a certain light. So when you're dealing with the of Kedusha, when you're just dealing with holiness, you're not dealing with one type of light. But when you work with the unholy, when you transform that, when you deal with those inner struggles and with the, with the struggles of the physical world, so then the light that you bring as a result of that form of service is a greater light. V'achidosh d'shleima and the, the, the novelty of what Shleimah Melech is saying in this verse, very easy, I have seen, who shall yidei bir of afich ha-saluma kedusha, that's through transforming the unholiness into holiness, nasi yisrin gam b'chachmas ha-toyra. This enhances even the, the wisdom of Toyra. Why is this a novelty? So the Rebbe continues, explains, that gam sham shachas v'yiri desa toyra l'mata yam shacha mitzad atzma, that even though that the whole, the Torah's being down here in this world is all about the Torah coming down sort of on its own, as it were. Mitzad Lamaila, it comes from above. Ukalosh and Matan Torah, like the, the expression we say, Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah. So Matan Torah means giving the Torah, but Matan also means Matana Milmaila, like a gift from above. Shalem Mitzad Avedis Adam. Just as a person, you, you can buy something from somebody. So when you buy something, so the person doesn't have to sell it to you. True, he wants to sell it to you, but you give them payment, and then they give you whatever it is that you paid for. But when you talk about a gift, when, I, when, I, when one person gives a gift to somebody else, he's doing it unconditionally. It's not because they did anything for, to deserve it. The gift is coming entirely on the giver's initiative. That's why it's a gift. Otherwise it would be a barter or whatever. That's a, that's a real gift. So the giving of the Torah is described as a gift from above. It's a gift. God gifts us the Torah. So therefore, Torah coming down to this world seemingly has no, is, is not at all impacted by our service or by our efforts. Are ah, you going to say that we know that when we learn Torah, we have, we have the obligation to be machadish in Torah, we have the obligation to contribute to Torah by uncovering nuances in Torah, new ideas, and developing new ideas and discovering laws. So again, there too, that's only that we reveal those things that are already embedded in Torah. That even the contribution that we make into Torah, that there's a, a, that a, a student would then, the older student will then come and eventually introduce a new idea in Torah. And he does this through his own toil in studying Torah. The, the effort he exerts in studying Torah allows him to then un, to reveal some new, to, to contribute some new, on, some new idea in Torah. But even that is parnit on the Moshe Mesinai. Mesinai. All that was already also given to Moshe at Mount Sinai. So if so, so why does he have any efforts? So it's Vayagi Yashaloi. His efforts is, is merely legale zeshen nitan kvar b'derech matan amshachem umayla. That, the, 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 that even though we say that a Talmud Vasik Asad the Chadish, that a student can then come and contribute a new idea in Torah, but even that new idea was already given to Moshe at Sinai. We know that in... in, in in Torah, if somebody is going to say something new, an entirely new idea that has no basis within the context of Torah wisdom, so then we reject it. It's, it's not Torah. Like the guy who came for uh, uh, approbation on his book, I think to Deborah Shab, and he was, uh, Rabbeim didn't give, uh, he didn't give a haskamis on, on Svarim, but he came and his book was not very good. So he said that it's such chidushim shalei nitul amayshim b'sinai. That these were such great new ideas that they weren't given to Moses at Sinai. Meaning, the guy who took it, he was, very, he was very proud of himself. It's such a great tradition. But obviously, what does that mean? If it wasn't given to Moshe at Sinai, if it wasn't already there and that you've revealed, then it's not really Torah. It's just, it's just foolishness. So the idea is that, that even though you have a student that will then come and contribute, but all his effort is putting, that he puts into contributing into Torah, into the wisdom of Torah, is only to reveal something. So for instance, you have that, the, 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 there's a certain a concept, let's say, of Kalvachimer, and uh, uh, a Fiorier. Fury. 
that uh, that you that you take you learn from something that's a, a more lenient idea that and you, and you apply it to something more strict. So not every not every law is spelled out clearly in Torah. So a, a, a student that comes and sits and, and studies in yeshiva and he's developing and he wants to know what's the law in a certain in a certain situation. So you might be able to apply that rule. So he's taking a rule that was already given. And the conclusion that he's going to come to is already embedded within the giving of the Torah, within that method of study of Torah. It's just that this student came and through his efforts and through his thinking and contemplation and his, and his, and his diligent study, he was able to reveal it. But it's already there. So we see that in Torah, you, there is no real contribution, new, a new contribution that a person could make, seemingly. At least at this point. So Mikol Makaim, so even though that's the case with regard to Torah, that in Torah there's seemingly a person doesn't contribute to it, and even his contribution is merely revealing what's already there. So it would seem then that you shouldn't be able to impact Torah in any way. So Mikol Makaim, nevertheless, Aidei Bira Sichlis Dukhachmas Titsainis, nevertheless, through um, um, uh, refining and transforming. Secular wisdom, and transforming it to divine wisdom. When you learn this wisdom, what does it mean to transform secular wisdom to godly wisdom? So he's explaining in the brackets that when you, how do you transform secular wisdom to godly wisdom? When you, in, when you learn secular studies, secular topics, in order to be able to understand Torah better. So you can understand it better. Shaidezim is better as Chachma Zuvin Echlaus Betayra. Through that, you you that that then becomes a part of Torah, included in Torah, and becomes refined. So in other words, you have two parts. One is that you can study secular subjects, and when you study secular subjects, it gives you an enhanced understanding of something. You know, there's there's a simple example. It's not about understanding, but just an idea that you have something, a, a reality that 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 changes the way you understand something. When uh, when man landed on the moon. So there was a segment of uh, the population that said that it didn't happen, it was a hoax. I mean, people, people still say it was a hoax. Why, but why did rabbis say that it was a hoax? Because they said there's a, there's a verse that says, I dance in front of you, I can't touch you. We're talking to the moon, we can't reach the moon. So if somebody landed on the moon, I mean, he's touching the moon, that would be a contradiction to the verse. So the rabbi explained that it's not the, it's not the meaning. When we say, what we're saying is, when you say Kiddush Levani, you sanctify the moon, so you, you jump three times. So the verse uh, touch me. But the point is that the verse doesn't mean that you can't touch the moon. It means that by jumping, you can't touch the moon. That's certainly true. So you see that you have, so you might not have ever pondered that concept in the, in the verse, that meaning of the verse. Suddenly, man lands on the moon, and now look at, we, have, we have to look at the verse. Maybe we didn't understand it properly. The same is true with any, any scientific discovery that, that causes us, sometimes it will force us to go back and look at these concepts the way we see them in Torah, and it gives us a deeper understanding in Torah. So there's that component, that you can study secular wisdom, which allows you to understand matters of Torah better. So sometimes if you study math, it gives you a better understanding of certain laws in the Torah that, that require math, or, or, or um, uh, you know, any, any laws that in Torah, there are plenty of them. You need math, you need geometry, you need other, other such wisdom that uh, allow you to understand these concepts better. Then there's something else, which is that, it, that you transform it and becomes part of Torah. So you can learn math, for instance, and then math will allow you to then understand the concept of Torah. The math is math. The Torah that you understand is Torah. And the two separate things, it's just that one contributes. That's a form of sort of elevating the secular wisdom. But then there's a, a, a thing, there's a, a situation where the, the secular wisdom actually becomes a part of Torah. It becomes sort of canonized, in a sense, into Torah, and becomes part of Torah. We're going to see soon in a, in a footnote. Let's, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. But through that, so Nasa Yisrael B'chach Masa Torah, this contributes and enhances the wisdom of Torah. Beyond what it is on its own. So number one, we see that through... Tra- that, that, so the Chiddush and the Pasuk is... Is that you would think... What's the verse telling us? What's the novelty of the verse that you might think? That true, there's an, an, there's an ad- advantage to light that comes from darkness. That's because when I'm, I, I'm dealing with darkness. And therefore, I can transform it and, and draw light. So based on what I'm doing, 
I can, it impacts the light I'm drawing down. If I'm just dealing with holiness, it draws one light. And if I'm transforming darkness, that brings a deeper light. But when I'm talking about chachma, when I'm talking about divine wisdom, where divine wisdom is already totally beyond the, 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 the abilities of man to, to, to deal with it, something that comes only from above, entirely from above. So how do I contribute to that? So that's what the verse is telling us, that just as you can transform darkness into light, the same is true with regard to divine wisdom and secular wisdom, that secular wisdom could, be, could enhance Torah as well, the Torah wisdom as well. So that is with regard to Torah wisdom even now. But now the Rebbe adds, V'yisayim azu, furthermore, Sha'idei ha'idos Yisrael k'aydem at Torah, when we're talking about Yisrael, who acknowledges God's greatness before Mount Sinai, so there, Nasa Yisrael g'am b'cholol ha'idem at Torah, this enhances, in a sense, the whole experience of Mount Sinai itself. This is an additional point. That even though Mount Sinai was the giving of the Torah Mount Sinai was totally came totally from above as we explained in chapter two it came totally from God's initiative totally from above. The things that 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 we that we the the new the new ideas. That that uh, that are that are revealed through students in every generation through a through a scholar in every generation. Even though these things were already given at Mount Sinai, these although come ultimately come to light through this the, this this diligent student. Nevertheless, however, that when we're talking about Mount Torah, Mount Sinai, the first time the initial act uh, the, the the experience of Mount Sinai that came totally from above without any service that caused it. Nevertheless, through Yisrael's acknowledgement of God, which symbolized, which was a form of transforming secular wisdom into godly wisdom, that, that caused an, an enhancement, so to speak, even in the Torah that was given to Mount Sinai. So what that is, we're going to get to in the next paragraph, what exactly this means. But what's the Rebbe saying here? So two points. One point is we said that by explaining the verse of Yesh Yisrael and Chachma Min HaSichlos, the enhancement that we're talking about now post-Mount Sinai, that today we have an ability to reveal new concepts in Torah, and through transforming secular wisdom, studying secular wisdom, either that by studying secular wisdom, that allows us to understand Torah better. So that's an enhancement of our knowledge of Torah. And also that it becomes part of Torah. So therefore, that enhances the Torah is increased in the sense that it becomes a part of Torah. In addition to, so that's all post Mount Sinai. That's post the giving of Torah, and we're saying that we get that 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 strength. Where does that come from? If the Torah came entirely from above, that came from Yisrael before Mount Torah gave us the potential that we should then be able to enhance Torah. But when you look back at the Zoyar, the Zoyar is saying that Yisrael goes and says. And acknowledges God. And afterwards, God gives the Torah. In other words, that it's almost as if Yisrael was sort of a necessary... Again, we don't want to use the term preparation because the Torah comes only entirely from above. But that, it, that it, his contribution enhanced the experience of Mount Sinai. That were God to give the Torah without Yisrael coming beforehand, it wouldn't have been the same. And it's after Yisrael came that, that Mount Sinai, the, the experience at Sinai itself was already a different experience. Had the advantage of this transformation of secular wisdom into divine wisdom. How that plays out, we'll see in, in, in this next paragraph. But let's go back. How are we doing on time? What time is it? Oh, we still have time. Well, we're still doing well. Okay. Let's go back, though, and look at the footnotes here. Let's look at the footnotes here. So we'll start with footnote 30. Yeah? Note 30. So we said in, 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 in the, inside, in the mimer here, we're saying that, that a student, a diligent student, what, 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 what does it mean? We say, Talmud Vasek, Asik Lechadish, that a... That a, 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 a Scholar can then come and give a chiddush, introduce a new idea. Chiddush means uh, something new, a novelty in Torah. So he said that it's merely that he reveals what's already there. Since nothing you're dealing new. with nothing's new, since you're dealing with what's already in, it's, it's all sort of already embedded in the rules of Torah. So therefore, he's merely revealing something. So let's look at note thirty. Ultimately, the Rebbe is asking. The, the term, the expression is that the Talmud Vasik asid lechadish that he's introducing something new. It's a new thing. So the Rebbe says, "Who came to Dubrakam of Pa'amim?" It says, "Explained many times." That Mount Sinai, we were given the rules, the general rules. The Gamla Bir, the Zeshir Rei, Vadinim to Teresh Shabbos, Shalamdu Mipsukei Atayra, Hem Leibedar Gilei Yehalam Elokamai Chidush Me'ayin Liash. And even though it's discussed in Chassidus in a number of places, this idea that that when we, that 
having said that all the rules of uh, everything in Torah is already embedded in the rules of Torah, and it's merely you applying these rules to then draw a new co- to, to come to a, 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 no- a novel conclusion. And in Chassidus, though, it says that that's, that's like a chidush yesh me'ayin. Now, yesh me'ayin, something from nothing, creation of something from nothing, that's, that's the ultimate chidush, that's the ultimate novelty, to create something from nothing. So even though we say that that Torah is, is every, all the rules were given, and so therefore you're merely applying the rules so it's as, as if you're just revealing something that was hidden, but in Chassidus it explains that it's like a chidush yesh me'ayin. So if so, it is a chidush. So the Rebbe explains... Number one, the Rebbe says, "Aleph Kivan Shagam Achidushim Hem Alpi Amidus Shatay Yedesh Ben Ein Zechidush Mamish Verakem Oichidush Me'ayin Liyash." The Rebbe, uh, looking closely at the, the words of the Chiddus, it says that it's it's a chiddush, but it's a chiddush like the chiddush of Yesh Me'ayin, like the chiddush of something from nothing. It's not the same thing. Yesh Me'ayin, God creating something from nothing. That's the ultimate novelty. That's the ultimate chiddush. When we reveal it, so we're revealing it, and it, the, the, the effort that, we, that it requires to be able to reveal something new in Torah is so intense, and the Chiddush therefore could be so profound that it's like a Chiddush Yashmein, but still it's merely like one. It's not an actual Chiddush. It's only like a Chiddush. Not an actual Chiddush. That's number one. And number two, the Rebbe says that Zesha Efshel a Chiddush B'Torah or Chiddush Shenasa Gam Aidei Haidos Yisrael. The second part we'll understand when we finish the last paragraph in chapter 3, where the Rebbe says, no, it actually is a Chiddush. That there is an ability, a person does have the ability, the, the capacity to be Mechadish, to come up with an actual Chiddush in Torah. And where does that come from, though? That comes from Yisrael. From Yisrael's acknowledgement before Mount Sinai. So the fact that that is, it is something that could be done is all thanks to what we're talking about here. Without it, it wouldn't be possible. Okay, but that will, that will become clear when we, when we read the, the next paragraph. Let's see, uh, note 31. We're saying that when a person learns secular wisdom, that enhances the Torah wisdom. We said two ways. Number one, it enhances your understanding of Torah wisdom. Number two, it becomes a contribution even in Torah. It expands, enhances Torah wisdom itself. So if, if that's the case, then shouldn't we all be immersing ourselves in secular wisdom? Because that's a form of uh, enhancing our, our understanding. So the Rebbe says in note 31, no, that's only Misha Shaykh Lazar. That's only somebody who is, um, is, is, is able to do, is capable. However, somebody who doesn't have this ability to, to elevate, to transform the secular wisdom, on the contrary, not only does he not elevate it, but he actually is drawn to it, and this is explained in the Maimer, and by uh, Moshe, and is from Tanya at the end of Perikhas. Atrebe says in Tanya that, there's, that when a person is engaged in Dvar Metel, when you, you say, you're saying foolish things, idle talk, Gossip, the things that have no no wisdom in them, um, just empty empty talk. So that affects a person. It affects his character. It affects his emotions. But when a person is immersed in secular studies, that affects his mind, his wisdom. So it's a much greater impact. Meaning that secular wisdom is a lot more dangerous because it it, it, it could contaminate spiritually the mind. So secular wisdom has a certain a certain advantage that you can transform into Chachma of Torah, but that's only for somebody who's, who's able to do it. Somebody who's not able to do it is best to avoid, to avoid that. And even... Yeah. Yeah. The, the, when you talk about secular studies, we're seeing secular studies, so, you know, when, when a person... Regular, so obviously we're talking about a tzaddik that immerses in certain philosophies and wisdoms to be able to, through that, enhance Torah wisdom etc. We could maybe learn there those philosophical svarim in Torah but, and even then it could sometimes be a little dangerous but, but it, to immerse yourself in secular studies so when it's for the purpose of a profession you have to make a living so you have to learn a trade and there's wisdom involved in that so that's already that's one thing but to immerse in it to engage in it just to, for the sake of engaging in it or even for the sake of transforming it that, for that already that's already not that's not something that's for everybody. Okay, note 32 where we said that through Secular wisdom, we actually enhance it, becomes a part of no? That he says, via Shleimar, you can say the Shnei Panam is the two, two ways. Through the secular wisdom that enhances his understanding of Torah. We discussed this outside. That then it also becomes part of Torah. But more than this, is that this secular wisdom actually becomes a part of Torah. Like, for instance, the, law, the, 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 the astronomy that's brought from, from the Greek wisdom in, that's found in the Rambam and the law 
because of Kiddush HaKadosh of sanctifying the moon, of calculating the new moon. And when you study these, these laws in Kiddush HaKadosh, the Rambam, the Rambam is Kiddush HaKadosh, it's full of Greek um, astronomy. And yet, it's not just a, a tool through which, sorry, right? It's not just that um, you use of the Amit, yeah? yeah. The Rambam himself says, first of all, the Rambam himself says that he's taking this from secular wisdom. All these laws against Rachel, he's saying it comes from Greek, uh, Greek wisdom. That's where it comes from. And it's not, but, but if you're learning, so if you're learning these calculations on how to calculate the, the cycle of the moon, you're learning in the Rambam, if you say that when it's just straight up Greek wisdom, so then it's not true. But obviously, when you're learning kids of Rambam, you have to make Birchas Atari, even when you're learning these laws. Why? Because they became part of Rambam. Ram, and, and Rambam himself, so number one, he says that he takes this from Chachme Yavon. And number two, he says, why? so why is he bringing it? Why is he bringing secular wisdom? He said so that you should find it in Taira and not in, you don't have to go look in Greek Sparna. Meaning, when you open up the Rambam, you look, the Rambam sort of takes it, transforms it, makes it part of Taira. That now this wisdom is part of Taira. And when you're studying it in the Rambam, you're studying Taira. So you see that the Torah is enhanced as expanded to Okay, let's keep, uh, let's keep going now. The next paragraph here. Last paragraph, chapter 3. Yes, Leymar. On page Samach Beis, the, 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 the last paragraph of chapter 3. Yes, Leymar. What, so we say that through Yisrael, there's an enhancement in the Mountain Torah. That post Mountain Torah, through our, uh, the Talmud Torah, you can enhances the Chachm of Torah through secular wisdom, as we explained in, in, in the different ways. But that Yisrael coming before Mount Torah actually enhanced the experience of Mount Torah itself. What's the Rebbe going to say here? That it's actually, like we said at the end of, of, the, of the footnote, of footnote 31, that the chidr, the, the fact that we have the ability to be Mechadish in Torah, that comes as a result of Yisrael. So we could say that Yisrael, that this enhancement that comes in Torah through through history's acknowledgement, is that Torah, it's that Torah itself, on its own, comes from above. What does it mean that it comes from above? It means that we don't, we can't impact it. And certainly, transforming darkness to light, that type of service certainly doesn't impact it. Because when you're talking about the light of Torah, there's no darkness. It's, it's, it's otherworldly. But the fact that Mount Torah came after Yisrael's acknowledgement, what happened was that when at Mount Torah, what kind of Torah did we get? Not the light of Torah, the light of, of Torah that is, that is indifferent to this world, that's beyond this world, that there's no darkness of this world. But the essence of Torah, in which there is no higher and lower, there is no no light and darkness. And this caused the Chaldea, this causes the, the ability to be able to call, bring a Chiddush into La Poshala, to expand that through transforming the foolishness of secular wisdom, we then enhance Torah. What, what is he saying here? You have like this. There's, there's a type of service of Hashem that is impacted by us. We can impact at a certain level. What we do impacts things above. And through you, you have to put it in, in this terminology. You have a source of tata that causes a source of eva. We do something that then brings about a reaction from above. That's a level where of godliness, where where this world is is affect, affects is affected by this world. So that's a lower level of godliness, a level of godliness that's impacted by this world. We work in this world, and that brings about a certain reaction, a certain a, a cause and effect, it causes something up above. But then there's a level of godliness that's totally beyond our efforts. That's a level of godliness that totally transcends this, wor this world. This world, like it says, what you do doesn't impact above because God is, is is totally removed from this world. So therefore, there's a level of godliness that is not impacted. Where does Torah come from? Torah comes from that level. Torah, we said, Torah comes from beyond the world. Torah is otherworldly. It's not from this world. The light of Torah. Can, it's such a powerful light that it, it can't be concealed by, by darkness. It can't be covered by the darkness of this world. The Torah as it is can come down here. It's the same Torah. Why? Because it's not from this world. It's not limited to this world. So on that level of Torah, we wouldn't be able to affect it because it's, it's totally otherworldly. So our Aveda doesn't impact that level of, of, of Torah. 
But then there's the essence of Torah. The essence of, that's a, a third level. The essence of Torah means that there's a level of Torah that's not, is not limited, is not defined by high and low. It's not defined by light and dark. It's not that there's a, like we, when we talked about in the previous time, we were learning about Yisrael and we were saying, Yisrael and there's a light that's so great it can't be concealed by darkness. Then there's another light, the light that, that comes from the darkness. But so Torah on its own is a Torah that is so, the light is so great it can't be concealed. That light, that Torah, that level, a Torah on that level can't be impacted by darkness, by this one. So by you elevating darkness, transforming darkness, you know, has no bearing on Torah. Torah is totally beyond it. But when you talk about the essence of Torah, the essence of Torah is not limited to light or darkness. It's all the same. Heaven and earth, up and uh, higher and lower, all the same. And so therefore, through our way that we actually have, can, can impact. It's kind of, this, is a, 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 this concept appears in many different places. Famously appears also in the famous Nesim Shekhev, also a parasha in Shabbat the Maimon. In this week's parasha, the Rebbe talks about this idea of, of service of Hashem. There's a level where we can affect, where we can bring about, we, we can impact godliness. That's a low level. Then there's a level of godliness that's beyond our efforts. We can't impact it. But in Hashem's essence, there, our Avaida matters essentially. The same idea here, we're saying that Torah, when we, when, when my Matan Torah on its own, we would have just been a great light of Torah that could be in this world and we can access Torah, we can understand Torah and, and bring light of the Torah into the world, but we can't impact it because it's not, it's not subject to this world and therefore it can't be affected by this world. But when we talk about being Mamshaf, the essence of Torah that we draw through Aydas Yisra, Yisra transforming the, the, the foolishness of this world, of, of, of secular wisdom into bringing it into the Chachm of Torah, that brought about the revelation of the essence of Torah. The essence of Torah is not limited. So therefore you say, a person can't reach a high, if a person's in, uh, efforts can't reach a high level of godliness, so that means that that level of godliness is limited to, to, to infinity, it's limited to transcendence, it's limited to a level that is not impacted by this world, it's limited to, to, to a higher reality. But when you're talking about the essence, it's not limited, it's not definable by anything. And so therefore, high or low doesn't matter. And so therefore, it can come into this world, and through our Avayda, we can then actually bring about a Chiddush and Torah. This is the meaning that we said at the end of here, of, of note 30, that the fact that we have this ability to be Mechadosh and Torah, that's something that came in Mat and Torah as a result of Yisrael. So that is exactly what we're saying, that on its own, Mat and Torah, that would have been, so to speak, on its own without Yisrael coming beforehand, we wouldn't have been able to be Mechadosh and Torah. But it's through this Avayda of Yisrael, Ati Yadaiti, that we're able to be Mechadosh. Yeah, then the Rebbe says, no, 33, we can connect this to the fact that we say Yisrael, why was he called Yisrael? He added above, because he added a parsha in Torah. So, <coughs> he's saying that this is the idea that we find that Yisrael itself, Yisrael added a parsha in Torah. In other words, it wasn't just an idea, that, an abstract idea, but something that came about, that through his acknowledgement, that brought about the Vata Sachsa, that new parsha Torah, there was a new Chiddush, something that wasn't there in Torah before, and the Pali, there was a new parsha contributed to the Torah, the parsha Vata Sachsa. That came, that brought about that Chiddush, Mat and Torah. Excuse me. That we, that we have this, that, that capacity to be Machadish and Torah, that never connects it with Torah, the Torah that will come as a result of Lassav, we call it a, a Chiddush, something new that will come in Torah, that came as a result of Yisrael, that then contributed in Torah in a practical, in a real way, an additional parsha that then gives us that ability after Matan Torah to be Mechadish in Torah. I don't believe.